Hey, what's up, guys? Today's video, we will talk something about Apache Antenna. This video can be divided into three parts. First is some basic concepts of the Apache Antenna. Second is what's the radiation mechanism of the Apache Antenna. The third part is how to design a Apache Antenna. And we will show you the simulation results of a designed Apache Antenna in the third part. So let's start. Here is the schematic of a patch antenna. It is made by the PCB technology. We can lay out a, a antenna on a substrate and fit by the microstrip line. If we want to design a patch antenna, we need to consider some parameters. First is the permittivity of the substrate we use and what's the working frequency of this patch antenna we designed. This working frequency can help us decide what's the width and what's the length of the patch antenna. Normally, the patch antenna has a length of a half-guided wavelength, and the width should be smaller than this value in case there are some other radiation will occur which will destroy the radiation pattern. Next, we will talk about what's the radiation mechanism of the patch antenna. As we said here, the length of the patch antenna normally is a half-guided wavelength. So the current and the voltage on the, on the patch antenna is showing here. You can regard this patch antenna as a big microstrip line, as a concept which can help us understand why each copper on a substrate can radiate. The length of the antenna is a half-guided wavelength, which means the, the current will go from the maximum to the minimum. The voltage is zero at here and here. If we look at the side view of the antenna, we will notice that this edge and this edge, we notice the, the E field is pointed both to the same direction, which means that the E field cannot be canceled with each other. However, for this two edge, if we draw the E field, this is similar to the microstrip line. I think you've already pretty familiar with the E field of the microstrip line. You will notice that the E field on this two edge will cancel to each other, which means that this two edge cannot radiate anything or almost cannot radiate anything. It is easy to understand since this patch antenna kind of a similar to the microstrip line and microstrip line is not a radiate or almost not radiate. So that's consistent with what we learned from microstrip line. But this two edge, it will radiate as shown here. If you read some textbook, they will say this patch antenna looks like a slot antenna array. This edge can be equivalent to a slot antenna. This edge can also be equivalent to a slot antenna. In the simulation part, I will show you. Once we cut two slots on a microstrip line, you will find that uh, the radiation pattern of this patch antenna and the slot antenna, they are same. And now we've already have some basic concepts of the patch antenna and the radiation mechanism of the patch antenna. Next, we will talk about how we can design a patch antenna. In this equation, it indicates what's the maximum width of the patch antenna. So this F is the radiation frequency of the patch antenna. ER is the permittivity of the substrate we used. Once we decide the width, and we can use the width to calculate what's the effective permittivity of this structure. Since when you design a microstrip line, you've already noticed the copper width or the microstrip line width will change the effective permittivity of this structure. And when we want to calculate the guided wavelength, we should use the effective permittivity, not the permittivity of the substrate. When we want to design a patch antenna, we know the width and then we can calculate the effective permittivity and we know the working frequency so we can decide what the length should be for the patch antenna. But something I have to mention is that, as you can see here, this two edge can be regarded as an open part for a microstrip line. We know that for an open part, it has some capacity effect, which means you can imagine there is a capacitor connected at the end of this metal part. This can help us shorter or make the length of the patch antenna to be shorter. And this influence of this open part is calculated by 
by these equations. And with the help of these equations, we can calculate what's the physical length or what's the real length of the patch antenna it should be. So now we have the width, the length, and um, we can design a patch antenna. The next part is if we want to feed energy into this patch antenna through the micro strip line, we also need to know what's the impedance of this um, antenna. This impedance can be calculated with the help of the width and the height of the substrate. This is the theoretical part of a design a patch antenna. I will show you an example in the simulation software. We have the basic concepts of the patch antenna and we know how to select the parameter a patch antenna. Let's start a simulation to verify our concepts. So let's try to design a patch antenna working at 2.45 GHz. Since you know 2.5 GHz is a widely used frequency in communication system. And I choose a substrate with ER of 3.5 and a thickness of I think 5 mm. These parameters are chosen randomly. I just want to show you guys what's the performance of a patch antenna in simulation to help you guys reinforce the concepts of patch antenna. Since we want to design a patch antenna working at 2.45 GHz and the ER is 3.5 GHz. Using the equation, we can calculate that the width of the patch antenna shouldn't be larger than 40.8 mm. So I set the width to be 40.8 mm. Once we know the width of the copper covered on a substrate, we can calculate what's the effective permittivity it is. Based on my calculations, the effective permittivity is close to 3.05 and now we can calculate what the half-guided wavelength is. Based on my calculation, it should be 35.06 mm. But as I mentioned, this part is open and this edge is also open. So there will be a capacitive effect, which means the physical length of the patch antenna can be a little bit smaller. And uh, considering this effect, uh, the physical length of the patch antenna should be around 30.4 mm. So I set the length to be 30.4 mm. And uh, this patch antenna is uh, fed by a 50 ohm micro strip line. And uh, we can check what the the far field of this uh, patch antennas and the working frequency of it. Okay, let's first check what's the far field of this patch antennas. Here is the, okay, let's check the 3D pattern first, which is easier to view it. Here is the radiation pattern. We notice that the directivity of this patch antenna is uh, close to 6.6 .6 dBi which means that if we can match the feeding structure and the patch antenna, we will get a gain around 6.6 .6 dBi, which is uh, close to the maximum value in theory. Theoretically, for a patch antenna, the gain is in the range around 5 dBi to 7 dBi. So if we have a great uh, match between micro strip line and patch antenna, we will have uh, a pretty high gain. Normally the patch antenna has a impedance, input impedance around 300 ohms. But normally for micro strip line, it is just a, has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. Currently we will not talk about how to match patch antenna. We just give you guys the basic concepts. We can talk about the feeding structure in the next video. Okay, now let's check what's the radiate. Here is the S parameter of this patch antenna. We can find that it's a radiate around 2.46 gigahertz. So it is pretty close to what we expected, which indicates the equations I gave you guys is pretty reliable to help you guys to design patch antenna. Antenna. There's a little bit difference between theoretical calculation and the simulation results, I think, because in the theoretical part, it doesn't consider the, the influence of the micro strip line. Uh, if you check the far field, you can notice that, that uh, the you can notice that the peak beam direction is not at the middle since 
there's some influence comes from the copper and the micro strip line. So the main lobe is a 11 degrees off center. We can optimize our structures to make it more symmetrical. As you can see here, this part and this part, they are not symmetrical. So this will cause the offside of the beam direction. This is an example of patch antenna. To help you guys better understand the radiation mechanism, we can check what's the, the current and the, the E field on this uh, patch antennas, the current density on these uh, structures. So As you can see here, here is the micro strip line. Here is the two radiation edge, which is uh, similar as we expected since, as we said, this two edge will contribute to the radiation, but this two side won't contribute to the radiation. If you check the, the E field, you can also see the same things. You can see here, here has a, a strong E field which means uh, these two edge, they are radiate in the space. If we check the axial ratio, and we will notice that uh, this patch antenna, it is uh, linearly polarized. The axial ratio is uh, 40 dB, which means uh, it is uh, a linearly polarized. Now let's have another viewpoint to understand the radiation mechanism of the patch antenna. I changed uh, this uh, metal part into a, a, a vacuum and have a two slot. Here is a two slot on the edge of the of the original position of the patch antenna. So this two slot can work as a slot antenna. You can see other parameters are same. We just uh, changed from patch antenna to slot antenna. And uh, you will notice some something pretty interesting. As you can see here, the the radiation pattern is a pretty close to that of the patch antenna. The direct activity is also pretty close to the patch antenna. Here for the slot array, the radiation is close to six point five dBi, which is almost the same as the direct activity of the patch antenna. So this indicates that uh, for the patch antenna, just uh, this two edge can contribute to the radiation. Another thing is uh, it can also help us understand why this patch antenna can radiate. Since you can imagine when the EM wave uh, go along the micro strip line, when it touch this edge, it will have some discontinuity. And this edge also has some discontinuity. So uh, like this way, the, the current will cross this slot, it can radiate, and uh, this slot, they have the uh, same mechanism. So that's why a patch antenna can radiate, and it's also indicate only this two edge of the patch antenna can uh, contribute to the radiation. This is the basic concept of a patch antenna. I hope you guys have uh, understand the radiation mechanism of a patch antenna and how to design a patch antenna. Okay, thanks for your watching. Good luck with your design and uh, if you have any question please leave on the comments.